and it was Hawkeye episode 5, everyone. Um, this was probably the best episode of the series. Series uh, since the first two episodes, which I didn't hate. There were some moments in there, but I they were the weak. They were, there was a weak start to the series. Um, it's been taking a nice increase, and this was easily the best episode. I had the best acting, I had the best scene moments, I had the big reveal at the end. Uh, and it had, gave us a lot of context to the world. I like how it starts... I like how almost every other episode is starting with a flashback. Um, you had the flashback to um, New York in 2012 with the first Avengers in the first episode. The second episode, uh, episode didn't have one. Third one started with Maya. And this one started with Yelena. I liked that we saw the perspective. We see in WandaVision, we saw with Monica Rambeau kind of how it was for people who were snapped. But ultimately, we, uh, what happened when the people came back that were snapped? But we actually never saw it in context. To everyone that was snapped, they were snapped and then just brought back. That's how it was. Like, it was instant. Like, they were gone and then they were back and then everything just changed. We had never seen that perspective before. And we now know like, Yelena was snapped. Uh, because I was wondering at first, like, was this happening after the blip where Yelena was doing good and saving widows? But no, this is happening prior to the, I can saying the blip. I want the snap, damn it. It's the snap. Uh, the snap. Um, yeah, prior to the snap. So I like that context. And I love that conversation between her and Kate Bishop. Because Lena, Yelena very much still comes off as, uh, I, I think it's because of Florence Pugh's acting. And she's also very young. Um, like, I think she's only in her 20s, maybe early 30s at most. She does come off very much like a younger sibling. Um, um, so, yeah, I, it, it's because she comes off as someone who just doesn't care. Like, I don't want to hear a second of pain. I just want to kill him. He killed my sister. And I love that line Kate gives to him. And I can't remember exactly what the line is, but it was essentially, he's like, yeah, you, if you know who hired you, uh, if you, uh, maybe you should contemplate the story the person hired you uh, if you don't really trust the person who hired I can't remember exactly what it was, but um, it's basically like it's something along the lines of, hey, yeah, the person who hired you probably isn't that is probably a little shady. So did you ever think of questioning the story they told you? And you can see the look. She doesn't like flat out like go like, oh, that's a good point or anything. But you can see the look on her face when Kate throws that towards her like, okay that's a point that's a point but <laughs> but she doesn't say that but like in her head she's saying like okay that's actually a legitimate point but i don't care at the moment uh she comes i i yeah i i dearly did like what they did with elena i do think that i do agree that scene was a little dragged out but i do like it <laughs> oh i have macaroni and cheese you must be hungry oh oh you're done can i add hot sauce to it okay <laughs> Uh, I love you on American Christmases. Like, ah, oh, man. Uh, I, I, you know, this character's great. Now, now I've been, been Red Guardian there, too. Um, oh, man, that'd be great. Yelena, why are you doing this? Um, uh, <laughs> um, uh, so, uh, absolutely. Um, uh, so, absolutely. I, I love what they did with Yelena here. Uh, I do like the scene with, um, with um, Maya's, with Maya, the scene with her a friend helping her out, and obviously the Ronin scene where Clint has to go and face her. Love the fact that just Batman's this guy just appears out of the shadow with his sword. Oh, that was really cool. Um, but um, I like that scene where he's actually, you know, sign word. And we established that Clint does know sign language, but he's nowhere near as versed as he is with Maya as it. So he's got to do lip reading and the and the signs he knows. Now he does clearly know a bit of sign language, like he knows boss and all that. Uh, I wanted you to see me. As like I wanted you to see me. Understand? Wanted you? I'm trying to remember exactly what it was. Wanted wanted you to see my face. No, that's beautiful. That no, that's beautiful. Like my see me <laughs> or something like that. Um, like I know it. I I I can maybe form a very mild sentence. Um, like, uh, you, um, you, or like, you, beautiful. Um, uh, so, yeah, I could, I could do that, or, um, it's like, and then, like, I love you. Like, I can do that. I, I, I could barely do anything. Um, uh, but, um, yeah, I will say one of the things, though, that I kind of agree with some people about is, 
I'm not feeling Echo as a character for her own series right now. And I mean, it honestly, it's kind of bold because the character is deaf, so she doesn't speak. So that is a bold thing to do. Like, it's one thing to do blind, like a blind character, or um, a, um, I, uh, I'm trying to think of any, because, um, there, I mean, there's no real term for, you can't smell, I can't taste, and unless you're, COVID, that's the term is. Uh, but there's no real terminology because of a handicap because that's not something that really affects your day-to-day life that much. Smell a little bit, taste, eh. But, um, no, uh, like, a death, a, a blind character like Matt, that's one thing because he can still talk, communicate, and still get a lot of expression. I mean, all of them can still get expression, but you know what I mean. He, we can still get a lot of dialogue with him. With a deaf or mute character, however, that becomes a bit of a, a, a bit of a different type of struggle uh because it's it, it's it's about how you communicate the language or the uh, communicate with your main character amid everyone else and while i totally am down for like the branching off into new ways of storytelling that will po- pose a different type of challenge as a filmmaker as a uh, storyteller so i it will be interesting to see um like how they can do that the other, the only problem is, I don't think Maya is herself, well, not a bad character, is interesting enough right now to be carrying her own series. I don't think that right now. I mean, we haven't seen a lot for me to feel that way. Because right now, all we've seen is the vengeful side of her. We haven't seen much else. We haven't seen her interact with anything on outside of the tracksuits or outside of Clint and Kate. That's it. Um, uh, so... Uh, yeah, I, I don't know about that, but I love what they did with Clint in the episode. Really, really hit everything weighing on him. And he, he just looked burnt, man. He just looked burnt out. He was so tired. He was so done. Um, yeah, like I mentioned in the last uh, episode where that scene where he basically ices himself down. I'm like, I've had days where I feel like that. But man, like the amount of abuse this guy is taking. Ugh. I love that scene of him, scene, I love that scene of him with... Uh, at the uh, apparently the memorial for the Avenger where they fought and saved the world, uh, I I love I love that where he just takes out his ear um, his earpiece and you know just starts talking to Natasha and I, I felt because he was pretty much just uh, you know ignoring the world uh, at that point it was just about him I do feel like anyone else can hear what he's saying pretty much um, but I, I found it interesting that you know they went that way at the same time. Um, so, um, uh, so, uh, wow, I just completely blanked. Uh, they went that way because I find it interesting that, you know, he can still hear himself, which is true. Like if I plug my ears right now, I am blocking off nearly all sound in the area. However, I can actually still very vaguely hear my voice a through the actual amount of sound that can get through my ears. <clears throat> well, and my voice just cracked a bit, uh, through the amount of sound that can get through my ears, but also through the vibration uh, through my body. So, in theory, even if I was completely deaf, I could theoretically still feel the vibration in my voice. Because we see that Maya does that with music. She likes music. She likes the vibration of the music. Um, so I actually like that scene quite a bit. And I liked what they did with Kate. This is the first time I legitimately had no issues with the Kate character. Because this is her finally, you know, having some, uh, like, her, uh, someone she looked up to really just kind of ram into her that, like, look, I don't care, you know, you think you know the rest of you don't, and, like, all that. And she's still being Kate about it, like, in that phone call. I was like, yeah, I do the rest of all that. No, this is about me, too. Which, it is, but it's still kind of your fault. But at the same time, those Kate-isms didn't mind, especially when she, like, accidentally destroyed something. <laughs> I really didn't mind it. And she's obviously the one who saves Clint at the end. But obviously, obviously, we got to talk about it. Vincent D'Onofrio as King of Now, he was on a very blurry phone, a blurry image. Uh, but no, it is, it's clear. It is Vincent D'Onofrio as King, Kingpin. Like, yes, they brought him back. Now, I th- I'm with a lot of people who speculate it's not the Netflix Kingpin because you got to make a lot of excuses of how that works. Plus, he should be in prison. Plus, Cottonmouth is Blade now. So, and uh, his sister—I can't remember her his sister's name. 
uh, was uh, actually had a cameo in uh, Civil War, so you, you can't do that. But it also confirms that, oh yeah, Charlie Cox is coming. Like, when uh, when um, Kevin Feige says, oh yeah, when we have Daredevil, not telling you how, when, or if and when, or is that, it will be Charlie Cox. Yeah, you don't have an actor in mind before you have plans for the character. No, you have plans for the character and then get the actor. You already have plans. And with Kingpin here, hell man, Daredevil might freaking show up in the season finale for all we know. <laughs> uh, because we got Spider-Man No Way Home tonight. Tonight, tonight. Me and my girlfriend have seen it tonight. Uh, 7.45 showing. <clears throat> I have been avoiding spoilers like the plague. I have seen one or two minor, because people are assholes on YouTube, and have uploaded parts of the movie. That's particularly the finale. But I have seen one or two little thumbnails. Nope, not nope, thumbnails. But the things that were in the thumbnails, I'm not surprised about. So, no, like, and I, like, I'm not worried about that. Um, so, hey, look, Char with everything, Charlie Clocks might show up in No Way Home. There's been rumors for a while he may show up in No Way Home. Uh, and if not, hell, man, could Daredevil show up in the series season finale of Hawkeye? Hey, man, with Kingpin showing up, I am not holding anything out of out of question at this point. Vince and Nanofi showing up, man, this is... So, I was watching, uh, watching one of, the, one of my, um, one of, one of the people I watch, and they brought up, like, this changes the game for Marvel. Like, how do you make Marvel stay fresh and How do you make comic book movies, obviously, stay fresh and relevant? But how do you make Marvel, after 15, near 15 years, near 15 years, how do you make them stay fresh and relevant? When lo most of these films are basically kind of a cookie color, uh, cookie color, cut and paste type of story. Uh, and the way you do it is you start, you lift restrictions before they were just dealing with, you know, they had their limits. Like this is where we're not going right now. So play within your ballpark. It makes for creative storytelling. Sure. But now well, they're saying with the multiverse and madness, with Spider-Man No Way Home, whatever's going on in there, bringing past characters to play, past actors to play the same character, but now in the MCU, they're saying, oh no, let's actually, we've earned we have made so many films. We've averaged a billion dollars a film now with, you know, COVID era that might have changed now. But um, we have made so much money. We've had, er, garnered so much goodwill. We've had one movie that didn't go over quite as well with the rest of the audience out of 20 some odd with Eternals. You know what? Why don't we just start to play? We've earned this. Let's do what we want to do. And you know what? This means anything could happen. This means anything could happen. Hugh Jackman is not going to come back to play Wolverine because he doesn't want to come back to play Wolverine. He's already now in his mid-60s. He's not going to do this. You know, he's, I've seen pictures of him recently. He's in good shape. Like, he's in good shape, but he'd have to still be Wolverine. He's No, he's not playing Wolverine. But a Michael Fassbender playing a Magneto? James McAvoy playing Professor X? Could we see um, Patrick Stewart? playing him and i'm just talking about like you know the x-men characters that we know who could come back we know ryan reynolds will somehow be a part of the mcu we we know that we know deadpool will be that's that's whatever i'm not i'm not even gonna like be concerned about that uh we're not i mean we're not going to um uh uh we're not we're not going to see like um wesley snipes play blade almost we see a variant blade uh, but we're not going to see that. Uh, but look, anything is possible now. And plus, I'm just really excited to see Charlie Cox and Vincent D'Onofrio back. Will we see Foggy or um, Karen? Will we see uh, John Berthold's Punisher? Who See, of all the ones they could still bring back, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, um, Iron Fist, Punisher. Of all the ones they could bring back... The only ones that still sound likely are, sort of, first off, Foggy and Karen. I think, um, well, it's not, that's not certainly not a given. I think that could still very much happen. Just, again, variants of the characters. At least Foggy. Because, <clears throat> um, uh, you know, Daredevil really isn't anything without, well, no, he is plenty without Foggy. But that's his, that's his main friendship relationship. Um, 
I think Punisher, even though there was some issues with the Punisher logo a while back with people using it in terrible ways, I do think uh, Punisher is a very strong possibility. But I think they would actually reserve Punisher mostly for the TV series world. Um, I don't see Jessica Jones. I do not see Iron Fist because neither the, Iron Fist wasn't very well received. Jessica Jones, what I. I wasn't a big fan of Jessica Jones. I didn't hate it. I liked season one okay, mostly because of Kilgrave. Season two was, uh, I just wasn't a big fan of the character of Jessica Jones. Because it's a victim being an asshole because she's a victim, basically. Like she's, I feel like she uses it as an excuse. Oh, and that's just my interpretation of the character. If you interpret it completely different, that's fine. But I feel like she used it as a justification to be an ass. I feel like, and I don't, I just don't dig on a lot. There's not a lot of characters who are like that I dig on. Like a house is one thing, but house actually, you know, had like a life-changing procedure and he was in constant pain. I'm talking about like uh, Doc House from the series House MD. Like he was in constant pain. So it made sense why he was like that. With Jessica, she was kind of like that even before Kilgrave. And we know she went through some trauma, but at the same time, I don't know. And she had a, her household was a little, I don't know. I, maybe it was the actress. I liked Kristen Ritter fine, but I don't know. Maybe it was the way the actress was portrayed, uh, or the character was portrayed. I don't know. I was just not a big Jessica Jones fan. And we're not going to see Iron Fist again. No. We, they might, might let Luke Cage be in, as the same actor, mind you. It, they might let it be Luke Cage. They might let Luke Cage show up. And uh, they would just recast Iron Fist. I have a feeling they'll recast Iron Fist. Uh, if we do like a... Sh when, they've announced Shang-Chi too. I think it's actually very possible we could see Iron Fist with Shang-Chi. I think that's a very strong possibility. That might be his debut. But the big thing that this allows for us is, even though right now he's only in the TV series... The net, unlike with, say, unlike, unlike what they will do with, uh, they did with, say, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Peggy, Agent Carter, um, uh, <clears throat> Agent Carter, uh, Eternals, not Eternals, um, uh, it, oh, uh, oh, God, Inhumans, Inhumans, um, and then the Netflix shows, the M Marvel MCU, while, their TV series are a smaller scale, are still directly a part of the MCU. With the, like, the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. kind of TV stuff, again, Agent Carter, or Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Inhumans, it was technically a part of the MCU, but not in any way that really mattered. Like, yeah, Nick Fury showed up every once in a while. Lady Sif showed up in one episode. Um, yeah, and they referenced stuff, but they really weren't connecting to the MCU. They were not, none of the characters that were in the series were showing up in the movies. Peggy Carter's different because she was already in the movie, and there's no way she could show back up in the movies, except she, I mean, she did, but, uh, through, uh, what was it, Endgame, um, Ant-Man, that brief sequence, the first, uh, Civil War. She didn't show up again, but in different context. And she initially showed up first in the movie. Whereas all these characters except for Coulson and, you know, the occasional cameo from a character from the movies were predominantly made for the show. Uh, so, and then, uh, and let's not even get into Inhumans. I didn't see it, but I, I could even tell just from the look of it, it was not good. Uh, so, um, so yeah, they, while they were part of it, they were not, it was not uh, melded very well. And Netflix, while most of the series were pretty solid, they only made allusions to what happened in the MCU. Um, they, like, they only made allusions, like, what about, what did you have people like those other guys uptown? Or, you know, when these more of these heroes show up, the more does, be, better it helps for our bottom dollar. So, like, like, they barely, like, the event, no, like, they barely ever made mention. Like, they're basically saying... Yeah, we're technically, we're kind of attached to the MCU, but in no way that's going to matter. That's what they were saying, basically. Honestly, you want, the easiest way to go about it now, thanks to Loki and all that, it was a very, it was just another dimension. It was in a variant universe. What the MCU, Netflix, the uh, Disney Plus shows do is the fact that 
everything is actually directly tied now to the MCU, and you can go back into the movies. Wanda, Vision, uh, Mon we know Monica Rambeau is going to be in the Marvels. She started off in the MCU. She's going to be on the big screen. Um, let's see here. White Vision will probably show up in the movies at some point. We know Wanda's coming back. We've seen that Doctor Two trail, uh, Doctor Strange Two trailer. Uh, the you, well, you know she's coming back. Uh, and I can't wait to get that you know, like a full blown yeah, like actual version of that to see because that, that that looks just crazy. And they're doing shit I did not think they were going to do, and I'm so happy they're doing. Um, <clears throat> so um, you know Falcon Winter Soldier, Falcon's the new Captain America. Uh, Sam Wilson, new Captain America, and we're going to see him on the big screen uh, again because they've announced Captain America for it. Uh, Loki, we'll see him probably on the big screen again. Supply, so we might see him in Doctor Strange too. Uh, we know we're going to see Kang on the big screen. Yeah, he got introduced as a Mortis or uh, he remains. Um, and so, yeah, and now this means we can see Vincent D'Onofrio's Kingpin and Charlie Cox's Daredevil on the big screen. And that's really cool. So, yeah, Hawkeye Episode 5, the best episode yet. If they can at least make this episode, as, uh, the last episode as good as this one, they will end the series on a strong note. And they will have given us probably not the best of the Marvel series. It, I don't, it's definitely not the best. But a solid Marvel series. They, they will have given us a solid series. Like If they if they can go at least 60% uh, solid uh, good episodes, they will have given us a relatively good show. Um, and I don't think, like I said, I don't think the first two episodes were as bad as uh, maybe some other people made them out to be. They weren't the best. They weren't the strongest opening two episodes you could have got, but still, it's um, it, it's it's a it's an impressive feat to be able to hopefully stick the landing and you know give us continually good shows over and over again. So anyway, that's Hawkeye. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I got my Zompacto video. Um, there was a birthday request yesterday, and unfortunately. Uh, I'm not going to be able to do that birthday request only because I've got other things to do today. Got to actually start to uh, dress up the house for Christmas. Uh, so we, have, we don't actually have a Christmas tree. We have a tree right there. We theoretically could use this one, which is silly, but could do it. Um, but um, no, um, it's just that if, and this is, this goes out to everyone. If you are wanting me to do a birthday request for your birthday, you can't give it to me on your birthday because I've already got other things prepared for that. I'm probably, you know, because I plan out my days the day prior or I plan out my weeks the day prior. Like Monday, I'll usually pre-record at least three videos for Monday. I'll pre-record my Lantern video I'll pre or if I haven't pre-recorded my Who Would Win, I got to do my Who Would Win. Death Battle Reaction if I haven't done that. Uh, and I, what if? I got to record like three or four videos that day. Just so I have a, a space out for a week because I have plans on Tuesday and, you know, I work a long shift on uh, Wednesday. So I always want to like pre, I do it, um, uh, I want to be preemptive about it. And like on Friday, because I'm going to do t uh, tomorrow's who would win today because it makes sense. I have the day off. I have the time. Like I will. And then, you know, with the week of what ifs and who wins, I got to do more of that. So I just can't do a spontaneous birthday video the day of. So if you want me to do a birthday request, it's got to be at minimum the day before your birthday. It's got to be at minimum. So I apologize, John, but I did put your suggestion. Sorry, Mr. John, Mr. John. Um, I did put your request in the, uh, the, you know, the request book. So it is, it'll get to that at some point, but um, it's going to be a while because you're far down on the list and I don't play favorites except for the birthdays. And even then I don't play favorites. Well, not, that's not true. Uh, I don't play favorites when it comes to my normal setup of who would wins and what ifs and suggestions. It's, it's first come first serve and don't think that, well, I gave you a request like months ago. Yeah. There are people who give me requests years ago that I haven't gotten to. That's how many requests I get. So, you know. It sucks to be popular. Uh, I mean, hey, look, I <laughs> I say this sarcastically. I appreciate everyone who wants to listen to me ramble and rave. Uh, anyway, I digress. I'm going on long enough. I still got other videos to do. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.